Look at this. <clears throat> I'm trying to cut to the chase, so to speak, because I want you to realize what you've got. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 12, go ahead and go back to verse 11. And this is the record that God hath, past tense, given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life. Isn't that pretty simple? So how many of you got the son? So you have life. Okay, we're going to talk about that. That word life there is zoe. It's life like God has it. It's his life. You have that when you have Jesus, right? Now watch. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Isn't that simple? He says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, think about this. You have this life. You don't just have bios. You don't just have physical human life. You have zoe life. You have life the way God has it. And it's eternal life. And that life eternal, this life is creative. Meaning it constantly creates and it constantly recreates in you. Why? Because even though at times our outward man may perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. It's a constant source. It's that well of water springing up inside of you, which is the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is the Spirit of life. And that Spirit of life, according to Romans chapter 8, has set the, the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has made us free or set us free. Now think about this. Of the Spirit of death. It set us free from that. And what that means is we don't have to have fear of it. And the thing is that whatever comes to us, that life in us emanates from us. We know this. We can see it from the Apostle Peter in the book of Acts. He would walk by. People would get healed when he walked by. Why? Was it a gift? Was it an anointing? Was it his faith? The Bible doesn't say any of that. But it says that as he walked by, they would bring out the sick and lay them on couches so that his shadow might overshadow them. Why? Because that life that he had in him emanated out from him. To the point that if you were within range of his shadow, you would get healed. We've seen instances of that. We've had people that travel with us at times that needed medicine. And I told them, as long as you're riding with me, as long as you're traveling with me, you won't need your medicine. Why? Because that life. Now, if you grab hold of it, you can get healed and not need it again. But in the meantime, you can live off of the life that I have. That life will emanate from you. But that life is not only creative, it's also destructive. And see, this is what people don't understand. The life in God that that we have in us because of Jesus is destructive against anything that is not life. Anything that's of death, anything that's of sickness, disease, sin, all that, that life in you kills that. I always tell people, we're like a divine bug zapper. You know? A, a virus, something tries to land on us, it's gone. There we go. Just, just kills it, you know? And you just walk around, just let it, yeah. That's why you're not afraid of the devil trying to do something to you. Why? Because you know whatever touches you dies if it is of death. It just, it cannot live in your body, in your physical body. Why? Because that life that's in your spirit. See, if you get a hold of this, it changes everything. Oh, let's put it this way. When somebody gets born again, What is being born again? It's putting the life of God, eternal life, into a person's spirit. Isn't that right? And they get recreated because of that life. But that life in a person's spirit is called salvation. Well, if you take that same life and put it into a person's soul, that's called deliverance. And demons will flee and even out of their flesh. And now, but if you put life into their flesh. We call that healing. But it's all just life. That's all it is. Why? Because the Bible didn't really tell you you have anything but life. He said, if you have the son, you have life. That's what you got. And that life will take the form of whatever you need. No matter what it is, if you need healing, it'll take the form of healing. Why? It'll drive out sickness or disease because out of your belly flow rivers of living water. 
That well that's in you is that well of the Holy Spirit in you. But we don't, we, we talk about it. We honor him. We, we do different things. But you have to learn to, to realize that he's in union with you. That he's in your spirit. And that spirit has life. And that life allows you to emanate life to others around you. You can get around people and they'll know you got something. They don't know what it is, but they know you got something. And if they have devils, half the time they'll run away. Unless you get to them first. I've gone in Walmarts and grocery stores and different places. Uh, just recently we had a person just start manifesting. Uh, it was a child actually on the way out here at a gas station. The child started manifesting. We've had other situations where people start manifesting when you get near him. Why? Because that life stirs up the devil because he's death and it bothers him. And they'll start to manifest. And when they do, generally you just cast them out. But that life is what you've got. And if you understand, see, I don't go around thinking, oh God, do I have enough anointing? God, do I have enough gifting? Do I have, do I have enough faith for this? I don't even think that way. It's not a matter of, it, listen, if I got born again and I had faith enough to get born again, I got faith enough for anything else I'll ever come into contact with. Amen. Why? Because that's the biggest miracle that could ever happen. Yes. We, we give it lip service. We say that's the biggest miracle. Most people don't. If you ask somebody, would you rather see somebody get born again or see the dead raised? Most people say, oh, I see a dead raising. Well, that's what happens when you get somebody born again. That's a dead raising. Amen? Life gets in there. So, now, I just want to give you a couple more of these. In John chapter 10, even in verse 10, Jesus himself said that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus did not say, but I have come that you might have gifts. He did not say, but I've come that you might have a special anointing. He said, I've come that you might have life. And that in abundance. What does that mean? Enough life to carry you through and enough life left over to give away to anybody else that needs it. Yeah. That's life in abundance. Yeah. He did not say, I came to give you an abundant life. Drug dealers have an abundant life. Yeah. They have cars. They have money. They have jewelry. They have all this stuff. That, that's an abundant life. He didn't say, I came to give you an abundant life. He said, I've come to give you life. Yeah. And that in abundance means more than enough. Yeah. Amen? That's what we've got. We, listen, believers, believers should be so hard to kill. Think about it. It should be so hard to kill a believer. We see it in the Apostle John. They tried to, they, most of the others died at some point, but they tried, they tried to kill him and couldn't. And they ended up, well, what are we going to do? Well, let's put him on an island. At least get him away from us. So he goes out there and writes the book of the Revelation. <laughs> think about it. They couldn't even kill him. When, now think, when Adam was created on this earth, he had this life in him. The life of God, God breathed into him, that breath of life, the spirit of God. He had that life in him. And then whenever he, because God told him, the day you eat of that tree, you're going to die. And they ate of the tree, and guess what? He did in his spirit. He didn't drop over dead physically. So God was talking about that life in his spirit. Now think about that. That day, that life was cut off. And he became death in his spirit. But even though that life was cut off, it still took over 900 years for his physical body to die. That's the residue of life. Think about that. That's why I said it should be so hard to kill a believer. And yet we've got believers running from everything. Oh, don't breathe this way. Look that way. Don't. Mm. Keep your social distance. I don't know if you know it or not, but staying six foot apart ain't social. That's your anti-social distance. Social is giving a hug. Social is shaking a hand. Why does the devil want us six foot apart? Because I don't have six foot long arms. I can't lay hands on anybody. This whole thing was an attack against the church. Why? Because the church was making headway. It was starting to learn who it was. It was starting to rise up. And the devil got scared because that's his nature. He said, we got to do something about this. If this continues on, 
He said, we're going to lose all the ground we've gained. And people don't realize because not only did it separate us from them, but it made them afraid of us. Yeah. You know, you get near them. No, please don't, don't, don't get near me. No, what I got, you want. Yeah. Yes, I am infectious. Yeah. And what I got, you want to catch. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? But see, yeah. most Christians don't think that way. So there has to be that life in you. Jesus came to give us abundance. I'll give you a couple more just real quick because we've got to finish up here. But uh, look at, go with me to John, yeah, John chapter 14. Yep, John 14. In John 14, there's some things he said here. Because, hmm. well, even in John 12, you don't have to go there, but he said here in verse 50, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. His commandment is life everlasting. But in John 14, and I want to read through this very quickly. Uh, we'll start in verse 6. Look at verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Do you hear that? I am the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Now notice this. Think about this. Now, we're going to read a little bit more of this real quick. But... If you went to Matthew chapter 9, you have the woman with the issue of blood. And Jesus is walking through the crowd, and the press is so strong upon him. Everybody's pressing in, and, he's, and this woman grabs a hold of him, and grabs a hold of his garment, and he felt virtue go out. And that word virtue is an old English word. It means power, dunamis. It's the same word that's used in uh, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, but he says that you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So the power you get after you receive the Holy Spirit is the same power that flew that flowed out of Jesus into the woman that instantly healed her. He didn't even know who touched him, but she got healed. All he recognized was, hmm, something just left. I just felt it. He's already given you his name, his power, his word, his spirit. He's given you everything. According to Ephesians 1, uh, he's even given us all blessings and spiritual, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In Peter, he says, he's given us everything that pertains into life and godliness. In Romans 8, he even tells us that if he has given us Jesus, will he not with Jesus give us everything else? But most people say Jesus ain't enough. Most people think, well, I got Jesus, but now I need this. Well, I got Jesus, but I also need this anointing. I got Jesus, but I need John Lake's anointing. That's an insult to Jesus. John Lake didn't even have a John Lake anointing. He had the spirit of God that he got from Jesus. Amen? There's no man's anointing. Well, I want a double portion of, of Elijah's anointing. Why settle for a portion when the Lord is your portion? Why settle for a piece when he said that we are to walk in the fullness of God? See, this is that life we're supposed to be living. This is so totally different from how most people even think of Christianity. 